Thank you very much for joining us here on VegasPBS.org. We continue our conversation now about how survivors and victims of 1 October can get the help they desperately need. Lachey, you were talking about a $5,000 grant. Yes, well there was, to my understanding, there was $5,000 that was set aside for you to go to therapy. I know people were looking for the GoFundMe funds and additional wages, but my focus and my message is get healing. When you become getting therapy and seeing your psychiatrist, when you become healing and take control back over your mind, you will be better. The focus is to get better, but I wanted to get clarification on the $5,000. How is that assessed? And it's actually not an assessment, it's a, it's a reserve that's okay. set aside for, for the victim. And we partner with um, a company that is a cost containment company, and so they negotiate our medical bills and our counseling bills so that if it's billed at 125 an hour, that may not be what's paid out. And therefore, there's more money available for the victim to, to have more treatment should they need it. Okay. Compensation continues, correct? Compensation in terms, there's a, a variety of benefits. Lost wages have, uh, every benefit has a particular limit. But if you're talking about um, beyond 1 October, mm -hmm. yes. uh, most definitely. I mean, the program has been around 30 years. I hope it's around a, a much longer period of time. But benefits don't stop after a year. That's just when you have to. Do you have to reapply? No. And do you have to pay it back? That was something that came up, too. Mm -hmm. I didn't know um, once you receive the funding from both centers, do you, is there a part where you have to pay it back? The only, the only time that, that we seek to recover anything is if there's civil litigation, such as the um, the lawsuits that have been filed against the perpetrator, mm -hmm. okay. but that that's completely different. We are not seeking to offset any of the money that people have received from the GoFundMe um, because that's a that's a compassion fund, and it's uh, based on completely different criteria than us. Why why is there an ad, uh, real quickly and then and then I'll go uh, why why is there a deadline? Why is there a one year deadline? Well, I think it's because we don't want individuals to, to go a very long period of time not having benefits. And, and, and there are certain people that, that maybe, you know, with Route 91, they think they're okay. And they've somehow managed to cope all on their own. They didn't have any physical trauma. But something could happen after that one-year deadline. Mm -hmm. And we want their claim on file by then. And the sooner that you file, the sooner w that we can assist you with benefits. But why can't they, uh, why can't they first apply after October? Why is there a year deadline? Uh, it, traditionally, it's always been a year. Okay. Um, now, granted, this is this is the first, you know, mass tragedy that the program has dealt with. Mm. All of our other claims that have been filed over the 30 years are individual claims ranging from. Uh, kidnapping, uh, sexual assault, human trafficking, but they're individual to that person. If there's a huge demand at, right at the deadline, let's mm -hmm. say, let's say uh, at the end of September you get 100, 200 people, would you extend the deadline just a little bit possibly, or is, is, is that forbidden by law? Um, that would be something that I, I believe would have to be done um, either by the governor or an, an emergency declaration. Denise, you wanted to speak to well, something. Um, yes. Oh, did you want to come out? Well, I was just say one of the things about the deadline is that's the deadline to submit your application, right. correct? So there's not a limit, you know, there's not a, a limit really on how many people can do that by the deadline. As long as you submitted it by the deadline, it doesn't have to be processed yet or reviewed no, yet. Okay. Have Benefits to, don't have, have to be to given out yet, happen. but we need they need to receive the, the application by then. Correct. Lachey, as a... Go yes. ahead. You want to make comment? Then I want to ask. Yes. Us. Can you clarify the if you're there, you're on the grounds. I'm a victim, so now I can apply. However, I have a spouse at home. I have children at home. They need counseling. So, do you apply for your spouse and your children, or is just you, the victim, because you were on the grounds? Yes. We. You are correct. 
um, for those that lost their lives, there are provisions for counseling for the surviving members of the family. If they didn't lose their lives, though, for, in, for instance, would there be counseling for Lachey's children? Unfortunately, not at this time because she is a, okay. a survivor. The, the counseling that is for family members is for those of the deceased. And that, that's where my question was. That's the problem. Right. Is if there is the funding and it's available, um, and we know that PTSD, it is, it is rampant. So with the funds, are people able to go and go into, let's say, Desert Parkway and get some help, um, get some help with uh, their outpatient services, and will, will, the, will the funding help cover those costs? I believe if they have insurance, their insurance covers it first, but mm -hmm. if there's like a leftover balance, or let's say they don't have insurance, because this is, this is my concern. For the victims, correct? Yes, ma'am, yeah. because okay. I want to make sure that the community knows that there is help out there. If you're at home and you're watching this and you're like, I, I'm really suffering, I really am having a hard time, mm -hmm. so I can't sleep at night, those flashbacks are coming up, that people can get help still, and there is funding that can support. Of course. Their, their treatment. So, of course. so that's that's my biggest thing yeah. is trying to be an advocate for that because people don't know that. I right. went to the six month candle vigil, and so many people that I walked alongside with did not even know that there was funding to help. There's like th we can get help. Right. I'm like, yes, you need to call and get help. And um, so for me, that's what I really want to promote is please, even if it's um, after this deadline. First of all, please make sure you all signed up by. Um, October 1st, but if you need emotional or behavioral, if you're having suicidal thoughts, flashbacks, if you can't sleep at night, if you're overwhelmed, if you're withdrawn, if you have a look on, if you just cannot cope, would you please, please get help? Yes. We, we have some ongoing exhibits and some events that have been in place for a while now. We're also coming up on the anniversary and there will be a lot, a lot of ceremonies for that. And Lachey, I'm gonna to go to you first because you're shaking your head. Is it a possibility that that could trigger some responses in yeah. people that have not been triggered before? Yes. Is it, is yes. I think that's expected. Um, just three weeks ago, I fell out of my bed and I was still running through gate, trying to get to gate number four. Desert Behavior has been free and been offering me free counseling since January, but I also see bridge counseling. Then I also have a psychiatrist. So you have to get the help. There's no reason to be ashamed. It's okay to say, I need help. And that's when we go straight to Terry, correct? And I'm not well. <laughs> straight Three to make therapists. a strong resilience. Well, and PTSD isn't about a weakness in a person. Yeah. It's about something that happened to a person or something that a person witnessed or heard about. I mean, the exposure to this incident is um, not even just local, but it, and it is constant. Um, it is, we live in the place where it happened. PTSD does not go away, but it's about learning how to cope with it to break through those triggers. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think we'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies, thank you very much. Thank very you. Very insightful. Thank you. Thank you.